Hi there. My name is Dan, and today I have the pleasure of sharing with you a little bit about an auto-documenting event-driven architecture using async API and ingest. Here's a short overview of what we'll cover in the next 20 minutes or so. First, we'll briefly cover why event schemas are important. Then we'll discuss why one would want to automatically generate event schemas. I'll then dive into exactly how we do this at ingest. And lastly, I'll finish with how you can do this yourself. All right. So first I'll share a little bit about, uh, the person that's speaking to you right now. Again, my name is Dan Farrelly. I'm a founder at ingest.com and I'm the former CTO of buffer. I love chatting about event driven architecture and home restoration. I just recently renovated a hundred year old home during the pandemic. So, you know, hit me up if that's your thing. If event driven architecture is your thing, which I'm guessing it is, if you want to reach out to me after this talk, shoot me an email at dan at ingest.com. That's two N's in ingest, I-N-N. -N, okay. That's very important. <laughs> so I'd like to take this opportunity to explain what ingest actually is. So ingest is an event driven platform that makes it easy for developers to build, test, and deploy serverless functions that are triggered by events without having to worry about infrastructure, queues, stateful services. And to think about it, the key components of ingest are a serverless event stream and a job scheduler that calls your functions on demand as events are received. So with ingest, you kind of get everything you need for an event driven architecture in a single platform from schema registries, logging, metrics, SDKs, tooling, et cetera. So that's not exactly what we're talking about today, but let's dive in and go back to our agenda and start with why build event driven. Now, I don't believe that I need to convince this audience, but with the focus of this talk, I wanted to share my opinion. You know, I think that event driven architecture can be beautifully simple. The way that I think about it is that you're publishing facts and running code using those facts. So the other key benefits to building this way that I see are flexibility with multiple consumers of the same event, which then naturally leads to being able to create highly decoupled architectures. You, know, you could have long talks about just this topic, but I wanted to just share what I think and what I feel about some of these things, some of these key hit hitter points that I think are related to what I'll be talking about today. So moving on from there, what is the most important part of an event driven architecture? I'll give you a little hint. This is not a trick question. Okay. It's the most important part is events. It's events, right? This should have been pretty obvious, but I think it's worth a mention as we often get carried away sometimes as engineers in the details of the architecture itself and lose focus of the core component. So since events are facts, they're immutable. They cannot be changed. A key responsibility of the system is to make sure that the services, or maybe you can say different teams, are publishing those facts correctly. So in order to accomplish this, we must document these facts and add control mechanisms to our system. And as you might've guessed, this is where we get to async API. So given that you're tuning into the async API conference today, I'm going to assume that you know what async API is. And I think it's not too controversial to say that the core of async API is the spec itself, right? You need to create a spec for it to be anything, right? Without the spec, it doesn't work, right? So how do you create those specs? I think the first option that most people start off with, which is fantastic, is to write it manually right? You want to describe your system. You want to be intentional. You want to think about what events you're sending. You can collaborate on this with your team. Maybe you end up using something like Git to collaborate on your system spec, right? You debate fields and how it's structured and consistency, naming, casing, all that, right? Formats that you're going to use. And I wanted to highlight today another option, which is to automatically parse the events flowing through your system in real time and then generate the documentation itself. 
So it's kind of the reverse. And I'm sure maybe some of you don't like this if you're very adamant about the first one and there's pros and cons to each approach. But I think that auto automatic generation is underrated. And I, so I wanted to talk about this today to highlight a little bit more and say, what are some cool things that you can do to generate these async API specs and what you might be able to do in your own system? So going from there, now we get into the details of how we do this at ingest, right? Early on, ingest chose to use JSON as our event format for our API, since JSON is ubiquitous and it requires no tooling compared to other formats like Avro or Protoboth. So nothing against those formats, just we wanted to go simple, something that you actually didn't need a library or anything to get going with. Each user sends their event payload in JSON to the ingest API using a unique key. So as each event is received, the payload is sent to a specific worker that then parses that event just out of the payload and generates a schema. So the system enables each client or service or microservices architecture to specify what this version of the event that they're sending is. You, and we have a standardized V field to specify the version, which is just a string and you can put anything you want in it. So every time that V value changes, we expect that it's a new version. So every single new version is parsed generated and then stored in this meta format. And the meta format that we use is called Q. You may or may not have come across Q yet, but we think it's a pretty phenomenal tool. Q is a data validation format, which can parse, validate, and generate JSON, YAML, and open API compatible JSON schema. So we chose this format as it enables interoperability across many different formats, as I mentioned, especially JSON schema. So our custom parser, which is open source, and I could share that link afterwards. Uh, you could find it on the ingest org on GitHub if you want to. But our parser, it walks any JSON object and generates a Q definition. So it traverses the whole thing and generates it in that format. So you can see an example Q definition here in this slide on the right in our standard event payload format. And it has our V version field, as you can see, which tells our system that the version has been changed and it should be parsed again. And now that we have a format that can generate JSON schema, right? We can generate async API specs, right? Because that's what it's based on. Right? So this is where it starts to get interesting. Now, I've described to you in broad strokes how our system works. But I did want to share this high level, generally simplified architecture diagram of how ingest works in this fashion, including our schema validation, parsing, and the registry. So as I shared a couple slides ago, clients send events to the ingest event API, and we immediately publish the event to a pub sub topic. Implementation doesn't matter in this, just a pub sub system. So those events are then consumed by an event recorder which then in turn passes the event to the schema validation library. Depending on the version of the event, it is either validated or it is parsed into a queue format and then stored in the accounts schema registry. So depending on what that field is, it's either chosen to validate against or to generate a new schema if it's recognized. So once that event is validated, it's then passed back to the job scheduler, which determines what serverless functions to evoke for that given event. So as our system works is we have serverless functions that then uh, declare what events they want to trigger them. It could be one event, it could be multiple events, but that's how our system works. So when the event comes through, the scheduler goes and finds those corresponding serverless functions to execute. and then it invokes them. So this is in just in a nutshell, There's schema parsing, validation, registry, all out of the box, right? So the end product is our event schema registry. 
this is a given example of an event called user.blogged.in, right? Something simple, simple concept. And this shows the different formats of the event schema, including queue, JSON schema, TypeScript, and a simple table view with all the fields. So this is built into our platform. For every single event, you get the history, and you can see what functions were called or are associated with that given event. And then you get every single version of the schema. So you can go through when it was first seen, what you call the first version, and what the format is. So that's really useful of knowing about when did things change, when did things update. And then all of these types are generated and we can use these meta formats to now generate even things like TypeScript to be used in our TypeScript SDK, which is exciting. What I think is really cool about this is, you know, all this data, of course, is coming from somewhere. So it's coming from our API, which now you know, means that it's portable, right? This view that you're seeing right here is only showing the latest version of this given event, but at the higher level view, you can click through every single version. So we think this is pretty useful and our users get a lot of use out of it and we use it internally and love it. I think the end result is a fantastic match. So let's see how the ingest system comes together with async API. So each user workspace, which is separated into production and test environments, has its own registry, its own separated registry. And each event requires a name. So these are great things if you know the, the async API spec. Now together, this now enables us to fetch JSON schema from the ingest API and use that schema to easily build our async API spec. We have JSON schema. You're seeing where this is going. It's open API compatible. To simplify this part, we wrapped all this logic into a simple NPM package. So this is just something small that you can use very quickly to get going. So why translate this to async API? That's just a little pause question before we go further. We already have Q, we have JSON schema, we have TypeScript, we have that table view. Why translate it? I think, of course, the key benefit is to allow users to tap into the async API ecosystem. I'm sure there are many other talks today and across this conference that are going to be talking about various parts of the ecosystem, including tools like code generation and documentation and a sharing system architecture and whatnot. That's the value in embracing this format. So one feature uh, that we're also looking to support in the future, which is kind of the reverse of what I'm talking about today, is where you can take that async API spec and then push it using it in a format to manage your schema registry. So you can update your versions and you can push it as a kind of a management format. And I think this is something that uh, some tools are doing well, and but there are still a lot of gaps with managing event schema and enforcing it and whatnot. So we think that, as I'm sure a lot of you all today, think that async API should be the format to be able to standardize around these systems. We'd love to really lean into that further and extend this. So we'd love feedback from y'all. If you have ideas in the future at the end of this talk or later, shoot me an email. I just wanted to jump to seeing it in action. Okay. So here it is. We're generating the AP async API spec from your ingest account. It's simple. You just first install, if you're familiar with NPM, otherwise if you're not, it's just a little package manager for the JavaScript ecosystem. So. You can grab the ingest CLI, quickly log in to your account where you've been sending all your events. And then you can use NPX, which is a little NPM extension command, which allows you to install and run something very quickly. And you can just run NPX at ingest slash async API. And what that does is it uses your login, your current session on your machine, and it grabs all of the JSON schema from our API, and then it iterates through all there, gets the latest version only currently, and then it generates the entire spec. So it generates it in YAML and formats it. So it's almost instant because it's already been generated, right? We already have the JSON schema. We can iterate through every single version so we can look at latest, we can look at anything. It can be pretty dynamic and pretty flexible. And I, I'd love to hear, like I said, more ideas in this, because I think it'd be really cool we generate this really quickly and you just need this one command and you can on the fly generate it. So really in theory, anyone on team 
could log in and pull the spec automatically from this event schema registry. That's it. Uh, now with your generated spec, you can use all of the great tooling in the async API ecosystem to generate code, documentation, and share across the entire organization. So I wanted to share this screenshot of just, this is my ingest demo account. And so this is all like a bunch of test events that I have in my mini venture and architecture system, and it's using async API studio. And what I think you can see here is that these are, cause they're all published events. You can see every single event that you have automatically generated in the format that maybe many of you are used to, or want to, or currently learning about and embra wanting to embrace. So this is just one example at the top where it shows you that there's this account created event. It shows you the nested formats. And of course this event is not super interesting in terms of the schema of it itself, but yeah, I think it's really cool and you can then tweak it, edit it, or generate other things, generate your own documentation. There's a lot that we can do here and I'm excited to start to embrace the async API spec and to use that as a format that maybe some folks can use and jump into ingest or pull out and have some familiarity as I think we, we hope that it grows and, um, becomes an even more popular format that everyone can be used to and be comfortable with. It allows people to enter and exit systems and pick up things and understand the system much easier. So this is only our first version. We hope to add on many layers of async API integrations. And I hope this today gave you a little overview of ideas of how you might be able to build a similar schema registry and auto-documenting event-driven architecture, maybe in your own system. So thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear some questions. And again, you can hit me up at DJ Tharley on Twitter to send me any ideas or feedback, file bug reports. I'll send you the GitHub repo and whatnot. You can find it at the ingest. Again, that's I-N-N-G-E-S-T. On GitHub, you can find our library there and you can find it on NPM and email me at dan at ingest.com anytime. Well, thanks for listening.